Shit, where's, where's Terry? Hey Terry, we're starting! <sighs> what's, what's, what's going on? What's wrong? I f***ed up my echo exam. Wh what do you mean? Like, how did that happen? Look, I found this YouTube channel called HSC Economics Review. They had these amazing videos. They had one on the budget. They had one on monetary policy. I watched them all. And I still failed. But how? Like, how is that? Like, what the hell? How did that happen? I don't know. I think I'm just gonna drop the No way. What's, What's up, guys? guys? It's Rowan. And Terry. From Artismart TV, bringing you another episode of HSC Economics Review. So in this episode, we're going to be diving into what to do if you f***ed your HC Economics trial exam, like Terry did, unfortunately. Now, honestly, I think, uh, you know, it's probably the first time you've had to do an entire paper, you know, two essays, multi-choice, three short answer, um, and trials typically are really, really challenging. Like, you know, schools intentionally try to screw you over in trials so that you're ready for your HSC, right? They'll put the curly questions in. You know, they'll try to really trick you on those multi-choices. They'll give you those tricky essay questions with the obscure stimulus just to really get you working. So what we're going to try to do here is help you turn things around, give you a step-by-step -step plan so that you can take what was maybe a bomb in your trial HSC economic exam and actually turn it into <coughs> a band six in your external HSC exams. So, um, you know, what's really step number one, right? If you've not done as well as you wanted to, you know, let's say, you know, a bomb or even just not the band six, what's the first thing students should be doing? Can I go to step zero? Step zero, all right, <laughs> step back. Okay, let's take one step back, right? Step zero, I think the most important thing, um, and I'm telling you this as, as a high school economics teacher myself, is to recognize that half of the battle hasn't even been fought. Your, your HC is still worth 50% of your overall mark. Mm. So no matter what's happened in this trial exam, go forth knowing that you are still in control of half of your destiny, right? You've still got half of it to go. So anyway, I've got to build on that because this okay. is actually so critical and your internal marks will get moderated. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Right? So I, I'm not allowed to talk about that because I'm, I'm a teacher. So. Okay, so <laughs> I can come in on that side, right? <laughs> Honestly, your internal mark, you know, you might you might get a mark that you look at and go, that's really horrible, but but based on how your cohort will perform, right, in the external HSC exams, that internal mark will get moderated. So it's probably not even a good indication of where you're honestly at right now. And if anything, given that it gets moderated based <coughs> on how you and your cohort go in the external exam, that even means that the better you and your cohort go in the external exam, the better the moderation can happen for your internal mark. So it's, you know, there's two reasons to do well in your external exams. It's worth 50%, yep. it's gonna be worth heaps. And if you and your friends do well, it improves your internal, you know, raw marks in terms of the moderation process. So yeah, a lot to fight for. So in other words, you shouldn't go and cry in a corner because you've got bad HSC economics marks in your trials or you didn't do as well as you wanted. <laughs> now is the time to double down. Yes. So. That's step, step zero. Let's go to step one. What's step one, Sarah? So step one, and I think this is really important no matter what you're doing, but especially for economics, is look at your mistakes first and foremost. And I, I think that one of the best habits you can do is grab a book, like a blank book, call that your mistake book. And you want to absolutely love and hate this book at the same time, right? Because you love it because it's going to help you, but you hate it because you think you look at it and it just makes you feel so upset, so angry with yourself. But what you want to do is look at that. When you get that test paper back, get your trial paper back, just sit down, take a look, flip through, have a look at all the mistakes you've made um, and maybe jot them down in this book, right? If, if it's a mistake, which you feel like you're going to make again, jot it down in this book. And then what I want you to do after that is actually re-answer those questions. Now, so Rowan, you've put a lot of time studying, you know, high performing students. Mm -hmm. What's the basis behind this? So I think that the basis is really, you know, if we think about it, you know, often what we tend to do, and then hopefully, you know, this is happening for you now, you're sitting in class, um, you know, you're getting your trials back, your teacher's going through and they're telling <coughs> you, here's how you would have got this right. And you look at that and you look, oh yeah, of course, that was so obvious, why didn't I see it? Oh, that makes sense. But the truth is, is that you've still got an underlying habit and that habit was you got the answer wrong, right? And so unless you actively go to change that, it's not gonna change in your HSC because it's akin to, you know, maybe playing basketball, taking a shot, missing it in the game, and then your coach telling you, well, just change your hand position and you'll get it in next time. Probably not gonna work, right? You need to actually go and take a couple of shots, 
get it in the hoop and go, great, I can, I can actually do this now. So what we've seen is that, yeah, high-performing students really don't just look at their mistakes and go, oh, that's why I got it done, that's why I got it wrong. They actually go and they redo it because it's actually about trying to rewire the habit. Because in an exam, it's a pressure situation and under pressure, things crack. Weak, weaknesses crack and you want to really turn these weak areas around. So yeah, really critically, go and answer these questions again. Take the feedback that your teacher gave in class Okay, and go and redo them and give them back to your teacher to give you some more feedback on to make sure that you're getting them right. Mm -hmm. So that's step number one. Mm -hmm. What's step number two? Uh, step number two is have a goal. Because I think being realistic, everybody I feel like you know that watches these videos, I'm sure you are all very high performing students. You are all capable of band sixes. But the reality is that we all have really different goals in what we want to achieve, right? For some of us, you know, economics, might be that maybe subject, you know, the 12th unit, so to speak, right? The one that may or may not count. So you're trying to reduce the damage, maybe? Yeah. yeah. But like everybody at least has in, should have in their mind what we're trying to do, uh, what you're trying to achieve with economics. So I think that step two would be once you follow through your mistakes, keep it real with yourself, keep it, have a realistic mind, uh, have a realistic goal in your mind. What do you actually want to achieve in that final agency exam? And the reason this is important is that it's going to define how much work you need to put in, right, over the next, you know, whatever weeks it is until your HSC economics exam. You know, if you're aiming for a band six and there's a bit of a gap, it's like, well, you know, you've got to really put some work in to close it. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're already pretty close to your goal, well, great, right? It can help you also identify how you structure your time, not just for economics, but across all your subjects. Because as much as we would love you to spend all your time only on economics, we know that's you know not going to happen, unfortunately. Opportunity cost. Yeah, 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 <laughs> definitely. So I think the key thing here is have a goal and write it down. Be really clear about it. Put it and do this for all your, all your subjects, honestly. But certainly the focus is economics. Write it down. Stick it in front of you so you know what you are working towards. So we've now got step number three. What's step number three? Uh, I think I learned this one from Rowan. It's his uh, traffic light system. I don't know where he learned it, but I, I really love this method because you basically just take a blank syllabus, right? Have all the syllabus dot points laid out there for you and basically just go through and pretty much with the colors of the traffic light, right? Red would be something which you're, you're not so good on. Yellows are maybe inconsistent, right? A couple of mistakes here and there. And green would be something which you're, you know, pretty spot on, pretty confident. Um, and then if you do that, go through the entire syllabus, do it for all your syllabus dot points. That will give you um, basically just a, a snapshot, right? Of whereabouts you are at the moment and be honest with yourself, right? Like I think a lot of, a lot of times people tend to actually underestimate themselves, mm. right? Like if, you know, if I, if I think back to some of the students I've had, right? A lot of them would just have them all red. Right, and that's obviously not a realistic, you know. And the proof in that is your trial marks. Yeah. You've just got data from your trial, unless you got zero percent, right? Hopefully not. Um, you know, you've got data to show where you're weak, where you're okay, and where you, you know, maybe you can improve, right? So really, this process should be done in conjunction with looking at your trial paper and looking at what you know, marks you lost in that trial paper. Mm -hmm. Now, it shouldn't just be though looking at the, the syllabus itself. Yeah. I mean, that's a great content place to start and in a moment we'll highlight why you want to do this but the other thing you should contemplate is also where did you lose marks in the paper because it's also a type of you know where you know i you know i hated multi-choice you know they were my weak spot give me an essay any day right but i know other students it's the opposite you know like <laughs> multis they'll just smash them out and nail them all the time in an essay you know they fall apart so the point is you also want to look at in the paper what section did you also struggle with the most? Because that's an indication of also where you're gonna to need to spend a bit more time trying to sort that out before the HSC. Now, the reason we want you to do this traffic light is that you're gonna start with the red areas first because they're the areas that you've got to fix. Yep. You know, They're the areas that if you get them again, you're gonna lose marks and you wanna start them first because then you've got time to actually go and ask your teacher at school like, hey, you know, I don't get this. So you've got time to get help, okay? That's the really critical thing. You need um, to start your red areas first because if you do them the week before an exam, you're not gonna get any help, right? Your teacher, a tutor, they're not gonna be around to go, oh, yeah, awesome, here's what you do. So start red first, mm -hmm. so you've got time. So that's step number three. What's step number four? Well, then you're kind of in <laughs> going to step number four. Yeah. Um, but basically, once you've gotten an understanding of whereabouts you are, your you, you red and your you, um, yellows, really start to take out your notes, have a flick through, have a read, right? And then try to rewrite them again. And now this time, really try to focus on um, 
feeling more confident, right? First of all, you know, actually feel like you understand it. I think one of the best things you can do to do this is to teach somebody else. Teach somebody that has no knowledge of economics, right? And if they can understand it, usually that means you've also understood it. Now, what are some other things that you could do in terms yeah. of the actual just writing the notes? Yes, I think the, the key is, and the reason Terry's recommended writing is that what we're really trying to do is you, you're trying to build your knowledge and your memory for these areas. And reading them has a pretty low memory retention rate. It's Ten really percent. horrible. It's yeah. so, yeah. it's, you know, it sucks, so don't do it. <laughs> so the best thing you can do is put pen to paper. And so really what we're talking about is getting that, that exercise book out, going through the notes, and just on the red and the yellow areas, not writing everything, but like dot point, what are the key ideas, right? Creating some, some awesome flow charts. And economics works really well with yes. flow charts because it's all about relationships. It's all about how things connect. So you can create your own sort of diagrams that just connect things for you in your brain. Of course, just drawing the diagrams themselves that are part of the course can be a really helpful tool to revise as well. So our suggestion is go through those weak areas, write some stuff up, dot points, create some images, you know, some, some diagrams, and definitely teach. Teach someone that knows nothing, but also pair up with a friend, right? Mm -hmm. Create a study group once a week between now and your HSC. Team up, sit down there and get you know your friend to quiz you, you quiz your friend on areas of weakness. Because it's going to be the best way to get really quick feedback on how are you going and do you need to do more work on these areas. Right? So that, that's step number four. What's step number five? Um, step number five, and it's really just, I feel like step number five is kind of tying this all together. Right, because I, I feel like when you, it's step number five is writing practice essays. But when you write an essay, I feel like it's really combining that knowledge and it's also allowing you to really commit it to memory. Because when you write an essay, um, you might not know this, but you are actually connecting ideas. Now, I want to bring it back to this idea of memory. Um, the way that the human memory works is that we learn by association. We learn by the connections that we create. So the more connections you make, whether they're visually in a mind map or, or, or a flow chart or in writing, the more connections you make, the, the more likely you are to actually remember something. So we've got this idea that you're killing two birds with one stone, really. You're remembering, well, actually, maybe three birds. Mm. Maybe three birds. Um, you're, you're, yeah. you're learning your content and remembering it. You're actually practicing for short answers as, as well. And then you're also practicing your essay technique because the way I actually like to think about my essay paragraphs, my body paragraphs, is they're just really six mark short answers, really. <laughs> right. So essentially, you write those practice essays, you're doing practice for, for the shorts, yeah, um, you do some quizzing of your friends. Those are the multis, right? And and there's your practice. That's the whole paper. But um, in terms of the actual essays themselves, is there anything in particular yeah. you had in mind? So I'd certainly recommend an approach as you as you work on the essays. And the way I'd suggest is, um, you know, one of the things that I see a lot of students do is that they'll write practice essays um, and take a lot of time to carve out this amazing yes. response. And earlier on in the year, that's okay, right? You know, because you're not necessarily going into this exam you know, conditions to produce an essay. But, you know, then what happens is those very same students that have written this awesome essay get into a 40 minute, 45 minute period of time to write an essay. And what they produce is a very pale comparison yeah. to what they are actually capable of with all the time in the world. And so mm -hmm. my suggestion here is the biggest issue with essays and poor essays is the structure. Structurally, you know, students haven't thought about properly how they need to respond to the question. And as a, as a result of, you know, missed, uh, you know, key information that needs to be included. So my suggestion is get a practice question. You're going to do one per week from now to your HSC, right? So, uh, you know, the hope is that will give you a fair few practice essays if you're watching this early, right, under your belt. And what you're going to do is you're going to take as much time as you need to plan the essay, right? So, you know, take half an hour to create your little plan. That's fine. We want you to think through the plan because that's a critical skill mm -hmm. in connecting the ideas, as Terry said. But once you've done the plan, right, then what we want you to do is time conditions, as much time as you would have in the exam, so work out time per mark based on the exam, time conditions, open book to start with, write that essay. And the goal is what we're trying to get you to do here is to be able to start getting comfortable in producing quality in, in constraints, time. in time constraints, which is really, really important. So you do one of these each week and then give it to your teacher, give it to a tutor, give it to somebody to mark because otherwise you don't know if what you've written is any good. Mm. And then you're going to assume that you're killing it for the HSC and then you go in and you write horrible stuff and you don't do very well. So really critically, you need to have a feedback loop on your work. So, so important. So final step, right? Step number six, what have we got? basically take it another step further. So from those essays, now do the full paper, do, do the past paper, right? Um, 
if you need access to past papers, um, your teachers should be start rolling them out, you know, this in term, term three. So make sure you go to school, right? You've still got a term of school. And I remember this was the time where every day I'd just walk into economics, get a past paper, sit down and just do it. Uh, it's a really nice, you know, just grind it out kind of situation. But you really want um, real exam or authentic practice, right? Because at this stage, you've probably only done the one trial. You might have done a couple to prepare, but you really want to get nice and familiar with the style of questioning. Because I'll tell you this as an economics teacher, we're economics teachers, not art teachers. We are not the most creatively inclined people out there, right? There are only so many ways that we can ask a question and there's been years and years of very, very similar questions. And that should tell you that if you get enough practice in, you start to notice some trends, you put your mistakes in your mistake book, you write out your notes, you do practice this, and you start noticing, hang on, these things are quite similar. And that will give you the practice and that will give you plenty of time just to actually know how to approach no matter what question you've got, you've got it, you've and, done it. And I think the one thing I would add here is that remember as you're doing these to pay close attention to the, the part of the paper where you lost the most marks in your trial, right? Because there's, there's that indication. And the final thing is that just to add on to Terry's point around like the mistake book, um, there are patterns, but honestly, most of the time, particularly with multi-choice, right? Because there's a limited set of things that you can ask, what will happen is that there will be little tricks, right? Little, you know, like little, little sort of complexities that are added. And honestly, you can, again, by looking at enough questions, see that those little tricks also have patterns. <laughs> so the really big recommendation is, yeah, if you get enough practice under your belt, start writing down, okay, when I get, you know, like a, a balance of payments, watch for, you know, when there's not a negative figure here and I've got to actually include a negative or, you know, maybe it's a multiplier question and they've been sneaky and, you know, they're giving you like a deflationary gap or, you know, there's these questions that you're going to get and there's only a, a limited variation of tricks, mm. but they will be in there because they've got to find a way to distinguish, you know, your band six, your band five and so forth. Um, and so the practice and identifying them is what's going to help you see those tricks in the exam and minimize those mistakes. So um, that really is the final step. So guys, quick summary. Step zero was double down. Now's the time to fight. You've got 50% left. Step number one was... Get a mistake book, write down your mistakes, review your, your trial exam. Cool. Step number two was have a goal, actually aim for something. Step number three... Traffic lights on the syllabus and also the sections of your exam. So whether it's section one, multis, section two, short answers, section three, stimulus essay or section four essay. Don't treat them as the same thing because they're not. Because they're different. Yeah. Definitely. Step, Step four, four, we've got revise your content using you know a rewrite, a mind mapping, a teaching others strategy. Step number five, write plenty of practice essays and make sure you get them reviewed. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And the final step was you're jumping into those past papers and you're looking for patterns and the tricks in those as well. Awesome stuff, guys. Our hope is that you know this has been able to help you really have a plan so that you can turn things around or just improve, right? Just make that step up that you're looking for for your final uh, HSC exam. If you've got any questions, of course, about prep, you know, for your HSC exams, leave them in the comments below. Either Terry or myself will respond um, and wish you all the best for your HSC exams. And Best we'll see you next time.